I'm Clint, and we're talking about problem solving your artwork on this episode of Swatches. The topic of this episode is inspired by a couple of comments I received recently here on YouTube, all along the lines of problem solving. Now, there's a couple of aspects to this. It's recognizing that your image is wrong or bad or something's weird, but not really knowing where to go from there. Or watching maybe one of my critique episodes where I break down what works and what doesn't work. Where does that come from? How do I know what to look for? I have a couple of thoughts on these topics and let's hit the first one. Learn from your mistakes. One of the reasons I can recognize mistakes in artwork when I'm doing critique is because I've made those mistakes. I see that something is out of proportion, the eyes are too far apart, I will probably recognize that because I've drawn the eyes too far apart before. And the same thing with every other kind of mistake. I guarantee you I've made a ton of mistakes in the last you know 20 years of my art, so I know what to look for. And the same thing with you, just the more that you are paying attention while you're drawing and you're problem solving your artwork, the more problems you'll come across and the more problems you'll solve. And once you solve one, you'll be able to identify that more quickly along the line. Sometimes getting an outside opinion is helpful. It is. A fresh set of eyes can be key to identifying mistakes in your art that you've simply kind of got used to. You've been staring at the piece for too long and what should be obvious you just don't see it anymore. And this can happen to anyone, especially in a longer piece. So get somebody that you trust that has a good artistic eye. Let them give you some good feedback on what they see. And define, don't feel. Now this is one of the main topics I wanna to cover on this video. And this is a big one, so listen up. In problem solving your artwork, you wanna define your problem. You don't want to feel your problem. And this is what I mean. Saying that your image is bad, saying that your image is wrong or weird or there's something off is not helpful. Those are just your emotional reactions to how the piece looks right now, but you can't actually do anything with that. Instead, what I'm saying is translate that into something definable. Okay, so it looks boring. It feels boring to me. Now what you need to do as an artist, you need to translate that into definable, changeable parameters artistically. That emotion be elicited by a number of different things. So start kind of going through your head. What causes the sensation of boredom in artwork? Is it because the character designs are too unoriginal? Is it because the colors are too muted? Or the value scheme is too limited? Is it because the poses are too stiff? There's a lot of different reasons that can happen. So don't stop with the emotion. The emotion is just the first step. Then what you have to do is interpret that, figure out what that means, and then find the definition, the parameter behind it that's eliciting that emotion. Once you have that, then you can modify that in order to get a proper result. Define why good is good. Now this is right along the same line. Yes, you can look at your artwork and try to determine why something bad is bad. But likewise, spend the time to figure out why good artwork is good. You look at it and you say, wow, that's cool. I really like that. Yes, but why? Because if you can determine why you think it's good and why you like it, then you can reproduce it. All of a sudden, it becomes usable information. If you can't reproduce it and use that information again later, that's really of no consequence. So you look at a good artwork. Why do I like that? Well, I like that piece because the soft and hard edges and the way that he interplays between the edges keeps my eyes circling around the image from, from hard edge to hard edge. Whatever it is, define why good is good in the images you like. And then save those images so you can reference them later and get good ideas. Study realism to recognize errors. 
Now, this one essentially, if you can learn to recognize what is right, then you will automatically notice when something is wrong. If you've spent a lot of time studying the way that things actually look, then when things don't look that way, they'll stand out very apparent to you. We have a very clear idea of what the human face is supposed to look like, what the proportions are. So if you see a drawing where somebody's eye is half an eye too far to the right or to the left, then it is going to be immediately apparent because we know what the face is supposed to look like and that's not what it's supposed to look like. Those are not the accurate proportions. But that goes for everything. If you know what a good tree looks like, if you know what a horse looks like, if you know how light behaves on metal, whatever it is, if you've studied realism enough, you will be able to more quickly, accurately define, identify, and recognize mistakes. That's where the downside is of fantasy art. Now, I love fantasy art. It's what I do for a living. And I know a lot of you watching this channel like it too, but be careful especially if you're still a younger artist, you're still learning, you're still studying, don't spend too much time doing imaginative works. That's because you don't have a firm enough foundation in realism that you keep drawing these things, but you're trying to spread a lot of ideas out from a very small base. And doing so creates bad habits. You start drawing things wrong. And you start reinforcing the fact that you're drawing things wrong over and over and over again because you have not yet learned how to draw them right in the first place so you don't recognize that you're doing it wrong. Schmidt. I would be a little remiss if I didn't bring up Richard Schmidt's advice on where problems come from in our work. From Richard Schmidt's book, Alaprima, he breaks down where problems arise and there can only be two places. It is either from something that you put in the image that shouldn't be there or something that should be there that isn't. And that's it. Those are the only two places problems can be in your artwork. Either there shouldn't be that much color and you did put that color or there needs to be more color and you haven't put it in there. Again, that goes back to knowing what things are supposed to be and being able to know how to change it to make it that way. Reference other successful artwork. This is a good way, if you're a little stumped, you're not sure how to go about a certain subject or genre or whatever it is, then look at other artwork where somebody has essentially already problem solved the problem that you're working on. And there are so many different ways to approach the same basic problem. And sometimes that's exactly what you need. You need a complete change of tactic. So maybe you just need to back up and go at it from a completely different angle. And seeing how somebody else has already solved that problem can really help you look at it from a different perspective. And lastly, two small things you can do just to help yourself out in painting that keeps things on track. One is flip the image horizontally. Yeah. You've probably heard it before, and you probably do it, but it doesn't hurt to be reminded. Flipping the image horizontally kind of refreshes the image in your mind. It's just a simple little thing to do. Or if you're working traditionally, hold up a mirror and look at it in the mirror, and that can really save you from getting too far off during your painting. And the second one is looking at an image in black and white. So it, that's very simple to do if you're working digitally. You just switch it to black and white and see if the values are holding up. Because ultimately, the values are more important than the colors. So if the values are holding up, then you've got a good core image. With that, I just want to remind you guys, problem solving in artwork, it comes from experience. It comes from being able to break down what you're feeling about your artwork into definable parameters that you can do things with. It is getting ideas from other artwork. It's maybe getting some input from other artists and looking at things from a different perspective. If you've enjoyed this episode, please give me a like. Subscribe if you want to stay up to date to more episodes. Don't forget to check out my art materials. I do have some books and videos for sale. You can follow the links below and figure out where those are. And as always, until next time, keep drawing.